We have seen in recent days both a nostalgic surge and an intensification of asylum seeker policy in Australia. With the election of the coalition government, we have seen a reintroduction of temporary protection visas and we have seen people having to wait in immigration detention centres for longer and longer and longer. Temporary protection visas give people protection for three years before they must prove once again that it is unsafe for them to return home. However, one of the worst aspects of temporary protection visas is that they prevent family reunion. Whereas before men could bring their wives and families to Australia by plane, the only way they could be reunited again is by boat. In October 2001, a ship dubbed Sea X sank in the midst of a journey to Australia. When this boat sunk, it killed 353 people, 65 men, 142 women and 146 children. One woman on this boat had been separated from her husband. He was in Australia but had a temporary protection visa which prohibits family reunion. So this woman, who was heavily pregnant, embarked upon the boat journey, the only choice she had left to be reunited with her family. As the boat began to sink, she went into labour and was found by rescuers drowned, still attached to her baby by the umbilical cord. That woman and her child were a casualty of temporary protection visas. If this woman and her child had reached Australia, they would have been placed in an Australian Immigration Detention Centre or sent to Manus Island, Papua New Guinea or Nauru. These women and children are put in Australian Immigration Detention Centres where they are called by a number and not by their name where this practice is so common that not only do children respond to their numbers being called, but they even know and can refer to the other children by their numbers. Under the recent Labor government, six pregnant women were sent to Manus Island. Out of these six women, three women lost their babies as a result of the transfer and the harsh conditions of the detention centre. We have now seen under the coalition newborn babies sent to Manus Island and, and Nauru, despite the high risk of malaria and despite the fact that according to a UNICEF report, babies and children under five years of age are 20 times more likely to die in Nauru than in Australia. Women in both mainland and offshore detention centres must endure arbitrary and demeaning rules. They are only allowed three sanitary pads a day. They may not have them all at once, but must queue up to receive the next one. Mothers are only allowed three nappies a day for their children. One woman was forced to beg for more when her baby had diarrhoea. Because this is what a policy of deterrence looks like. This is the reality of the abhorrent slogan, stop the boats. We must become worse than the oppressors, worse than the persecutors. We must become worse than the Taliban and the Lashkar Jengavi and the bombs and their fundamentalism. We must become worse than the Sri Lankan army and their president who oversaw the slaughter of 40,000 Tamil civilians in little more than a week. And the worst thing is that we are succeeding. It is not the Taliban, it is not Lashkar Jengavi or the Sri Lankan army that has forced people to want to take their own lives, it is Australia. We have instituted a policy so macabre that it forces people who have survived all of this to want to take their own lives in Australian detention centres. 87% of asylum seekers in detention have been found to suffer from clinical depression, specifically as a result of their detention. We put functional human beings into detention centres where they are left until they have become dysfunctional. We turn people who have survived bombings, torture, deportation, homelessness and harrowing boat journeys from resilient survivors into people wrought with despair and mental illness. We create a situation so dire, so hopeless, so surreal, so macabre, that it is worse than the bombs that dot the streets of Quetta. So I say to the woman left in Taliban-occupied Afghanistan because she cannot be reunited with her lover because of temporary protection visas, it is not a crime to seek asylum. To the woman and her newborn child who drowned in the ocean, I say to you that you are not illegal, that you are not worthless, that you are important. To the woman who spends her days and nights in a barbed wire adorned detention facility, that you are not a number, that you have a name and that I welcome you here. And I say to all of you here tonight that as long as a woman and child can be detained in Papua New Guinea by the Australian government purely because they were born in another country and because they exercise their fundamental right to seek asylum from persecution, that our political system is built upon the foundations of injustice and inequality and we can never know peace until this is rectified. I say to all of you that it is up to us to send a message to the Labor Party and to Tony Abbott that no longer will we tolerate our national character being defined by cruelty, by intolerance and by party politics. That asylum seekers are not political footballs for your election campaign. It is up to
to us to yell louder across the ocean, across the borders, louder than the gunshots of the Taliban, louder than the bombs that dot the streets of Quetta, louder than immigration detention centre guards, louder than the heights of the barbed wire fences and louder than the voice of despair and hopelessness that permeates Australian immigration detention centres. Say it loud, say it clear, refugees are welcome here. Refugees are welcome here.